Hey everybody, Jay Young Show here. Man, we're really excited today to see Jeff Krilly, the creator of this whole entire universe we see here on the floor, seventh floor in Lincoln Center. Really excited about that, but Jeff, let's start off with a joke. Right. I, I heard a joke this week, and I don't want to get political on anybody, but sure, sure. I, I did hear a joke about um, Joe Biden. Do you mind if I... Okay. No, go ahead. This is your show. I'm the guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, normally, we flip the mic, but... Well, anyway, so Joe Biden walks into a bar, and and uh, he sits down, and he's right next to a real beautiful woman. And he, and he asks her, he says, um, hey, do I come here often? <laughs> that was a pretty good joke. It's good. It's not, yeah. it's not political. Or you have the dentist, the, the dentist joke as well. The okay. dentist, what, what do dentists call their x-rays? What's that? Toothpicks. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, let's start <laughs> we, off with the show we, here. We this need, is about Jeff Crilly. <laughs> we need a rim shot. Yeah, okay. I know. We need, we need a drum. <laughs> what? Jeff, you can't create a drum set? We've got sound effects. I know you do. Really put one in. But you need to make sure we put that up there next sure. time. But anyway, this is about Jeff Crilly. And Jeff, Jeff, thank you for coming on, I guess, my show that's in your studio, right? Is that how we call this? Yeah, and I got to tell you, it's weird to be the guest because I've got a show too. And, it's you know, it's you get in a rhythm where you get to right. be the host. Right, so it's right, It's weird being the guest. You don't change seats or? No. <laughs> yeah. Change mics? No. Anyway, let's just go on and let's talk about you real quick because I'm, okay. sure. man, this place has grown a lot. I think it's like 2000. 19 or 19 is when I came over yep. and did my first show and just kind of got to know you. You created this whole real news and it really wasn't like it is today or Correct. you didn't envision this Correct. years ago. What what did you start off with? So uh, my daughter, who's my vice president, shout out to Sarah, uh, came up with this nutty idea five years ago. It's been five years since we started broadcasting. She said, Daddy, we need to get into podcasting. And I laughed at her and I said, who listens to podcasts? And she said, oh. she said my generation does, yeah. Dad. All those kids on the Katy Trail, they're listening to something, but it may not be music. I said, all right, uh, here's my credit card. Don't go crazy. So, <laughs> it's always dangerous when you give your wow. credit card. Wow. So, That's so, a lot of trust. <laughs> it's a lot of trust. She, she spent about uh, $2,000 on, on mics like this and a board, but no fancy lighting. And I was really kind of pacifying her, ignoring her, because you know we're a traditional PR firm, and so I'm concentrating on the big stuff. Let's get people right. on, the, on Fox and CNN and the Wall Street Journal. And I'm just pacifying her. And I'm ignoring her little hobby, right? Wow. And so first month, if I had to guess, we may have had uh, five clients in the podcast division. Second month, 10 clients in the podcast division. Third month, 15 clients in the podcast division. And that's when it got my attention. And I said to myself, wow, this is a thing. Like instead of pleading with the media, please put our clients on the news. Why not just become the news? Hmm. I mean, it's all about creating the environment of news. And so we've now spent a million and a half dollars on television studios and my studios, I would put up against uh, any of the local television stations. I think you'd have to go to, um, you know, New York and um, Good Morning America to find fancier studios than the ones that we have. And we have really harnessed this idea that podcasting became super cool, mm -hmm. but everybody who is a host just wants to be the host. They don't want to edit and upload. So can you imagine, Jay? I mean, I think we're in the same yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, uh, age range. If I didn't have a production team editing and, and switching cameras and all that stuff, I wouldn't have a show, period, because right. that stuff drives me crazy. And I think that describes most people who decide to have a podcast. Right. Is, you know, I love to talk to people, but please don't make me spend three hours at night editing and uploading and tagging. That's right. the boring stuff. Right. So we've gone, you know, that nutty idea my daughter had um, five years ago. We now have 160 different television oh, shows, goodness. including the Jay Young Show, wow. which is my personal favorite. <laughs> there you go. You heard it right here. You heard it right here. Don't tell anybody else. He probably, he probably tells that. Well, I'll tell you what I love about Jay. Jay, um, Jay kind of shoots from the lip. You, I mean, you have an idea of the questions you're going to ask, but it's not scripted. It's not it's not tight and scripted. Yeah. And, and the fact that you can just kind of show up here and, and rock and roll with it impresses right. me. Oh, because good. Thank most people who came up through the traditional channels of television news, they probably learned it the wrong way, which mm. is, um, you know, really try to be, um, you know, Joe Anchor or Jane Anchor and and unless you have a gift for communicating with the camera, you can become fairly robotic. Right. And, and you know, how many 
media pe people that you see on TV, do you feel like, do I know this person? Right. But with you, I know you. I yeah. mean, you started off with a couple of bad jokes. <laughs> you, you you laughed at your own jokes. I did laugh at my own jokes. <laughs> Which, uh, I, mean, I think that's it, isn't that what you're supposed to do. If I don't yeah. laugh at my own jokes, sometimes yeah. nobody else does, especially when I'm, me and my wife are, I'm telling my wife a joke, she didn't laugh, and I, but I thought like it was funny. But anyway, yeah. um, so, getting out, getting yeah, out my so, joke telling. So we have now um, studios in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, South Lake Town Square, wow. and, and Austin. And wow. have, have you been to Austin yet? I, I know you have the Capitol in the background. It's beautiful. I know that. Yeah. My buddy Nolan Ryan, I'd love to get him to that That's studio to get the, the yes. Capitol in the back. Nolan's going to do a podcast oh, that would be with awesome. me really soon. And uh, I'm going down there to see him in a couple of weeks. But anyway. That's awesome. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a podcast or not, but when we do... I'd much rather, instead of doing it from his office, I'd much rather do it from that capital in the background. That is so awesome. Good yeah, for you, yeah. man. Good for you that you've been able to grow this. Well, I'm... How do you do that? I mean, I'm how, man. The, the secret is the team. You know, I, I made a decision several years ago. I love owning the company. I hate running the company. And yeah. so my daughter, I elevated into vice president. We have a head of operations, Josh Hart. And they kind of run the day-to-day. -day right. And they innovate. And uh, we have amazing um, employees, as you know. That's awesome. And each one of them is... I love them. They're great, great, great people here. Young Gen Z millennials that are yeah. hardworking. And they just like run through a wall to make the clients happy. And when you have a whole team like that uh, you can't help but have you know great content and right. great product yeah one of my favorite people Jeff Grilly I mean to, to really Thank see you. and you go down a path and go okay I have all this money invested in real news and I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna I'm gonna you know because I know you're a hard worker and thank you I want to talk about what inspires and motivates you in a minute but what going forward and all of a sudden your daughter comes in and goes hey let's change up everything <laughs> Because, I mean, you're doing, you're still doing the news and still doing the media and all that stuff, which I appreciate. And I've yeah. got calls today sure. uh, from people that are calling me because of you. Thank the, you. The, the Jeff Crilly. Thank you. Call me because of him. But just to say, man, you stopped and said, I believe in the new generation. My daughter is going to, you know, oversee this. That's awesome, man. That is really good. to Thank you. And then 160 different. Yeah, so that's yeah. 160 different shows. television shows, and then we have another 30 uh, clients that pay us to get them on the news. Yeah, and so you know we have 190 clients on retainer, and um, the blessing to me, Jay, is I sleep like a baby. Hmm. And think about that. You know, you have a bunch of clients, and they all have your cell phone. I have a bunch of clients; they all have my cell phone. Um, I cry like a baby too, but I mean, <laughs> I cry, I cry hard at night. I'm sorry, is that not how a baby cries? You had different babies than I did, I guess. Mine so, cried all that long. That's kind of how I sleep at night, though. Well, I sleep like a baby because we're attracting the right kinds of clients. Mm -hmm. uh, I read a book a long time ago that said not everybody with a checkbook is a is a good client mm -hmm. and there's truth to that i'm oh, sure yeah. that you've taken on some investors in the past that you regretted and you might have had to fire fire an investor or two yeah. um same thing with me as we've grown this thing over the past 15 years i've become very clear and we know what we do well and we know what we don't do well and so just like colonel sanders we just do chicken right <laughs> so we stay in our lane and anytime somebody comes to us with an idea that's just a little bit outside of our lane uh, I've told the team it's better not to take the money because mm -hmm. I would not like to take the money and then get the disappointed phone call. Right. And so um, Josh, my head of operations, says, you think about you know an assembly line at Ford or something like that. They know how to make this model. Right. And they make this model over and over. And you say, okay, now we want you to make a, a Ferrari. Right. Well, no, the assembly line is not set up to do the Ferrari. Right. <laughs> it's a completely different car. Exactly. Than exactly. A, than a, a Ford truck. So um, we just keep the machine running and uh, I pride myself on being able to go on vacation. I had a vacation with my wife. It was the longest vacation we've had um, since we got married. Nine days away, we went to the Grand Caymans. Uh, not a single phone call from the company Wow! in, in nine days. Wow. Because the team kind of prided itself on saying, you know, we don't, unless the place is burning down. Right. Jeff, Jeff doesn't need to know. So let's, right. and so I come back and they just kind of report to me on what happened and what decisions they made. And I pride myself on not second guessing um, people and saying, why did you, you shouldn't have 
thought that way. Right. Um, I, I say, you know, tell me the factors that went into that decision. And if there's a teachable moment or I, we can explore, is, was there a different way to handle that? That becomes a conversation, but not never a second guessing situation. Oh, wow. That's good. I, that's what I think a lot of bosses do poorly. Well, a lot of trust. Thank you. A lot of trust in, in them. Absolutely. You know, so that that's big because you have a lot more experience in things that haven't worked. And so it's hard not to just run in there and throw them and go, hey, what, what's your biggest? Uh, what's your biggest success and what's your biggest failure? Okay, let's let's. I mean, I want I want yep. both of them to run in because yep. I want you to, you know, uh, bi biggest success is um, getting the team to the point where it is today. I call it a thank God it's Monday company. Jay, you've been here. I mean, there's laughter. We cater daily for our employees. Yeah. So what I really pride myself on is this attention to excellence, hiring the right team, and now. Um, the sweetest sound I hear all day long is uh, during lunchtime, the uh, the team eats in another conference room and, and I eat in my conference room. The reason I do that is deliberately, I don't want to, I think the the room changes when the boss sits down for lunch. Yeah. Suddenly the conversations are stiff. Right. And, okay. So uh, the sweetest sound I hear all day is the team laughing. Mm. Um, during lunch. <laughs> during lunch. They're sitting here and they're sitting over here and, the, and they're laughing. And, and, the, and the doors are closed. So 20 yards away with two doors closed, I can hear laughter down the hallway. And if I'm entertaining somebody, I'll say, I'll, I'll pause the meeting and say, I want you to hear that. Hmm. Most of these folks came from newsrooms. We didn't hear a lot of laughing in newsrooms. There, there was a lot of tears, but there, were, <laughs> there wasn't a lot of laughter. Wow. Um, so that's the greatest success. Um, greatest failure. I think uh, the greatest failure was um, creating divisions that didn't quite work out. Um, but a wise man said, you know, make small mistakes. Don't make huge mistakes. Don't, right. don't like put it all on red in Vegas. And so, you know, at one point we had an entire web team. We had five people in the web department. Mm. And what I discovered was we were killing it on the media side. We were killing it on the podcast side. But then we would get complaints about the web department. Mm. And right. um, I'm a pleaser. You know, my love language is words of affirmation. Right. I want 190 parades every month, not 189. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the fact that we kept getting complaints about the web department, and then we started to look at it and we figured out, man, with all the effort that we're putting into it, we're not even making any money in the web department. So we just kind of blew it up. Yeah. We, we, you know, if I, if I can't do it with excellence, I'm just not going to do it. So but that's a lot. I mean, to, to have the podcast and the podcast team and the, that's a whole business in itself. Not only the, because the media, I'm trying to think of you yeah. being in the Caymans. Right. Caymans. Yep. Yep. I don't think of you being in the Caymans because man, you've got to be there. And, and normally your day is how's business and what's going on with employees and how are we doing and clients and things of that nature. But it's also the news. Because the news is 24-7. Yes, yes. You can't put that down and go, oh, yeah, I'm not yes. going to pay attention to the news this week or something. Well, you mentioned something earlier in the show. I get up every single morning at 5, you know this, and I begin my day, and I write a daily email that now goes out to 28,000 journalists all over North America into London, England, and there's an open rate fluttering around 40%. Wow. Which is extremely wow. high for a daily email. And so these journalists trust me, and I, I put you in there this morning, and you said I'm already starting to get requests. Uh, the journalists that have been reading me for years say, well, the last 50 people we booked from Crilly's tip sheet were good. Why wouldn't Jay be good? Mm -hmm. And I want to praise you. Um, you do a great job. When I listen to your radio interviews, you don't talk like a stuffy Ivy League, you know, guy who read a bunch of books on oil. You talk like a, a Texas oil man, <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what I. So and, be myself. That's yeah, what you told me. You told me to be yourself. Jay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you know, fourth generation. Uh, I mean, just you. If I had to go to Hollywood and get central casting to find an actor to be the the Texas oil man these days, the modern Texas oil man. Yeah. I think they would. They would choose a guy like you oh well thank you yeah. I appreciate that you got this kind I'd of take my, I'd take my tie off and I'd put my <laughs> cowboy hat on you know which I do have one but I don't wear it very often it's not my and Jay if you've not seen Jay in per person he is a tall man normally I have to have a, a cushion <laughs> from my guest I have a cushion for myself how tall are you are you six four? like six four six yeah. four that's amazing you're you're a big guy yeah. and I had nothing uh, to do with that I wish we had video of this 
just before I said, Jay, you look in shape. He says, watch this. I went down and we did 20 push-ups in the hallway. I know. Well, you're supposed to. 25 push-ups a day, four times a day. Yeah. Get your muscles, get your muscles pumping. And it just makes makes sense. It makes, you know, so instead of I I think you should start doing these interviews with short sleeves <laughs> and say, my office is over there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I I do have some really short my, my wife does not like it. She, did, did you did you wash that shirt too many times? Or? <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Oh my gosh! Yeah, is, is that is that is that your daughter's shirt or something? You know, <laughs> you shop in the boys' department. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So let's 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 get back a little bit. I've got a little bit more time. Sure. I've got a big rancher I'm supposed to be talking to right now about a big lease, and I'm really excited about that coming up on the. The, the other Jay Young part of the show or whatever sure. um, in our old business, which is awesome. Um, what I'm, I'm trying to think of all your successes, your failures, your things, and what, what, what inspires you? What, what, what inspires me? Yeah. What m- inspires or motivates you gets up every day, five o'clock every morning. I mean, what time do you go to bed? Uh, I go to bed early. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like in bed by nine. Are you? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, I try to get a, you know. You try to get eight hours? Okay. Yeah, try to get eight hours. Um, what motivates me is this idea that I'm growing this with my kids. And even I have a grandson, Caleb, he's 13 years old. And last summer, he would sit in at the reception desk. And mm-hmm. I didn't witness this, but I was told this by others, <laughs> that he would walk around from behind the reception desk look you straight in the eye, give you a big firm handshake and say, my name is Caleb Hill, future owner of this company. Oh my God. And, and you're a fourth generation. I, I mean, that was kind of an epiphany for me because I think in the, you know, the movie of my life that I had been writing, I figured, okay, sometime in my mid sixties, I'll go emeritus and show up, you know, occasionally. Mm -hmm. And that gave me new life. I said, man, why would I miss this part of the movie? He's 13 right now. Mm -hmm. He won't be able to really work for us in earnest until his early 20s. So why not just stick around? I mean, I'll tell you a story from over the weekend. I was watching Jimmy Johnson on TV. You know, he's now a Fox commentator. And uh, uh, yeah, Jimmy Johnson. So I looked at him and I said, man, how old is Jimmy Johnson? So I, I Googled it, he's 80. He's 80. Is he really? He's 80, and he looks good, right? He He and Jerry are the same age. Did you know that? Well, I didn't know that. So um, it really impressed me. I was like, man, here he is at 80, still at the top of his game. He's, you know, one of the lead uh, commentators at at Fox. And he could easily have retired, you know, a couple decades ago and sat on his boat in Mm -hmm. in, uh, his yacht. Key West. (laughs) In Key West. Um, And I think he has some restaurant interests and other things. But no, I mean, he's got fire in his belly. And I think it keeps you young. I do think it keeps you young. And and so every single day for the last 15 years, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, I've gotten up at five to begin my day. And it's a privilege. It's a privilege. When If I ever catch myself, Jay, saying I have to put out this email, I quickly kind of figuratively slap myself and say, no, 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 you get to put out the right. email. You have the opportunity. I have the opportunity yeah. to influence all these journalists. And it keeps my mind really sharp because from 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. when I press send and send it out, mm-hmm. I am putting together this very complicated crossword puzzle. Right. And so just as you have to work your body, right. as you do with the one-arm push-ups, I, <laughs> I, work my, I, one-arm I, work, I work I work my mind. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Good. I mean, that... That's good because um, one of my next questions was talking about what's what's five years, ten years, or whatever, and what's what's gonna. But, but you're yep. saying you're saying I'm. Yep. We'll build this to sustain the build business. It. And and I'd like to eventually roll out one of these in every major market. So right now we've got you know the Dallas Fort Worth area and Austin, but Houston would be next. San Antonio would be next. Right. I think every major city needs scaling this. Yeah. Podcast. News pod is it just going to keep on news and podcast? Yep, pretty much, and it's keep doing it and growing it, and and um, you know we're starting to get bigger and bigger clients now, and and so um, it's um, hard work. Taller, pays. taller than me, bigger, <laughs> bigger, taller than me. Well, I I don't think we do have anybody taller than you. <laughs> you might have a new record. <laughs> so you're just looking to scale it with your people that you yep. have internally, and just grow the business and say, hey, and. So what was in Austin? What is there an office in Austin? Um, if I went down there, so is there a there's a, there a door with a Jeff Crilly? Yeah, there's a real stu- news. There's a studio, and maybe we can put a, a video in over this uh, when we when we edit it. Um, 
But it's beautiful. It's got an unobstructed view of the Capitol. We're two blocks away from the Capitol, and there's nothing but green space, and they can't build a building between um, the Texas Bankers building and the, wow. the state Capitol. So, wow. so we, um, our, our landlord is the Texas Bankers Association, and they have a beautiful nine-story building two blocks from the Capitol. That could be your, your, uh, your millionaire investor. That's close. <laughs> Well, I'm flattered that here, here Jay is is interviewing me. He could be making money because he's got these. No, things, no, it's things, all about Jeff things, Grilly, man. Things, this is about the Jeff Grilly show. <laughs> so you have people. So you're just looking, and you'll put somebody in charge of the the real news in Austin and say, okay, hey, we need to grow up the podcast. So their yep. their job is to grow the podcast because it cash flows. It cash flows well, and in. and you're um you know with the capital background. There's a lot of great opportunities in Austin, uh, government money, um, association money, tech money, mm-hmm. music money. Right. So that whole scene, people who would never drive to Dallas to do a show uh, would easily go to the Capitol to do a show. Yeah. Yeah. God, well, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm and then you're doing it in Fort Worth and yep. Austin and you're going to go to Houston and just, yep, that's the just idea. expand it. And Obviously, we, Oklahoma, we, one of these days. Yep. I'd love to have Oklahoma City. Yeah. That would be a good one. Yeah, That'd be we, great. We've got South Lake Town Square, which is <clears throat> doing well for um, all of the folks in the mid cities. And so, yeah. So when I retire, I could come to work for you and start an <laughs> Oklahoma City <laughs> podcast. And all I have to do is just go out and find 50, 60 people to do a podcast in that studio every every. I would be week honored. Or, I'd be honored. Man, that'd be awesome. No, I'm not going to retire anytime soon. <laughs> I love the old business. I don't know what I'd do without it. You know, it's just one of those things that's just a great time. It's in your blood. It is. And this, right now is the, is the best time. This is a good time. Can we talk oil a little bit? Sure. Um, 11 month high for oil. Yeah. Okay. What What is doing in that? Jim? Well, as I've been talking about for a long time, we're not drilling for oil in the United States like we were before. You know, these public companies, they were putting 90%. When oil prices went way up, 90% of their capital or profits would go back into drilling wells. Only 50% of it's going in there now. What does that mean? We're drilling less wells. If you drill less wells, you have less oil in the market. Less oil in the market means that prices are going to go up. It could go to 150. We've heard 200, 300. Wow. I mean, it could really go up a lot, which makes a lot of more projects that we have more feasible or internal rate of return is better. Yes. It makes it more sense. You know, so that's what we're excited about and what sure. we're doing is... is and- Oil prices are, are going to go up. And your investors have to be so happy right now. I mean, yeah. That's, well, how, how much do you think it could go to 100, 150? You know, it was, it was almost there during Obama. Yes. Yeah. I don't see, I don't, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd put futures contracts and sure. I mean, put some money out of my pocket and put it on the futures, but I could see it going to 150. Absolutely. Yeah. And which would be great for us. We're in like a, in my opinion, we're in a two, three year. So we have a we have a fund right now that we're raising. I could get it in a year, two years to where we need to sell either all of it or half of it and half of it, give all the clients their money back and then continue to drill because we've got some really, I mean, with Nolan Ryan, my, yeah. my buddy there, I was playing golf with him and he said, he has somebody that I've now become real good friends with that's, that's calling me. And we're, he's got 100,000 acres of land wow. that he wants developed, and it's in a great area right next to where we're drilling right now. So it's like, man, that is, that's the opportunity that we have and, yes. I, and I see for, for our legacy as a... Well, and the, the other thing that people don't think about is the tax benefits. I mean, the way the law is written, um, you can't go wrong investing in oil yeah. because of the just the tax implications alone. Right. It's like a 30% guaranteed return day one or at the end of the year because you write it off 80 90 percent the first year and because of your tax bracket yeah we just say it's like a 30 percent first year you know return then it's my job to go out and find the prospects to get the other 70 percent back yes and then a multiple on it so yeah. that's that's and we do monthly income checks we have checks going out this we my wife was on the phone with uh, our accounting department last night trying to finish up the revenue run so we can get that out. People like monthly revenue checks. They do. And yeah. and you have a great reputation in the ind- industry. Everybody that I mentioned your name to says, I love Jay. Yeah. So, yeah. 
thank you for um, continuing the legacy of your com of your great company. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And maybe one of these days I can be on your show again. I would love it. I would I, love it. You know what? I have to mention this too. Not to. Yeah. But 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 you know, I brought Phil Romano over here you long did, yeah. long time ago, <laughs> and that really feels a great guy. He and is. I, he talked forever. I think he came yeah. on your show. I love he, it. And he was on your show, too. Phil so. is, a, is a, such an inspirational guy. He just came out with the book, Mad Entrepreneur. Remember yeah. that? And uh, uh, Make a Difference, right. M-A-D. Uh, but you did a great job interviewing him, and uh, he has such a rich you know, Man. rich story. You could have gotten three hours with oh, Phil no. Toronto. Yeah. He, he is, he's, a, he's a great guy right now. I haven't seen him um, in a while, but um, I do see his son. I keep up with, with yeah. Phil. But um, what, a, what some of the people that we've interviewed – Yes. What great inspiration. What a privilege. Know. Man, yeah. and it's great. Instead of listening to, you know, Billy Bob sing some yeah. country western song that right, right. talks about, well, we won't go into that, but <laughs> listen to a podcast and yes. you can learn something. That That's what I like. All right, you're coming on my show and I'm going to have to come up with some bad dad jokes <laughs> just to top yours. <laughs> you got a deal? Man, you're you're I, awesome. I appreciate you. Hey, God bless. Jeff Crilly. Jeff Crilly, everybody right here. You're amazing. Thank you, everybody. We'll do the Jay Young Show again soon, and we'll do it in the in the Real News um, department. So thank you for coming here. We'll be back soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.